Prologue Six years ago, Ben uncrossed his legs and hunched forward. Wobbly knees trembled under the mahogany desk as he fought to suppress his plaguing nausea. Do you have any specific instructions on how I should handle the matter? Ira Rattenbury's mellow voice echoed off the thin, panel-covered walls of an office hiding in Brandywine's downtown historic square. I hoped you might have a solution. This was a difficult decision. Ben lifted his head from a determined stare at the envelopes he'd dropped on the desk. Uncertain how to broach a troublesome topic, he removed and cleaned his wire-framed spectacles and replaced them on his pale and furrowed face, shuddering at the reflection of graying hair at his temples. Altering your last will can disturb your long-held confidences in prior decisions. Do the envelopes contain a change to the estate's division among your heirs? Ira shuffled through the paperwork strewn across his desk. No. Ben inhaled the scent of the sandalwood candle Ira's secretary lit outside the frosted glass office door, its pungent burn reaching his unprepared nose. Ira's face crinkled. Did you acquire new assets we need to account for? Nothing since we spoke last year. Ben's hands pressed atop the leather organizer, tapping an unknown rhythm incapable of soothing the erratic hesitation in his voice. I want to do anything I can to help. Maybe you should tell me to whom the envelopes belong. It's quite a fine and delicate parchment. Early 20th century? I'm assuming the contents are of significance. Yes. The stationery was a gift from my wife years ago. I apologize. I don't mean to be unclear. Regret terrorizes even the strongest of men. Ben flinched while peering out the window at a mother pushing a baby carriage along the main street, unsettled by the grinding whir of traffic passing by a few feet away. Someone other than him needed to know what he'd done all those years ago. Ben knew it was time to confess his sin, especially after watching so many people ripped from existence around him. His oldest friend recently died of a heart attack on the golf course, mid-swing in front of him, as they finished under par on the last hole. The image of the five iron and golf ball gliding through the air, both landing several feet away on the dewy grass, as his friend fell to the ground still haunted Ben. Fear of his own mortality had been cultivated that day. Ira pushed back his leather seat a few feet, stood, and adjusted the pocket on his linen coat. I understand your difficulty. If this contains material of a sensitive nature, I assure you, I will personally handle the matter. No one else in my office will know of our conversation.